Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. In this video, we're going to continue assembling the gantry for my Voron 2.4 350mm 3D printer. In the previous video, we got all of the rear frame completed. Now we're going to be assembling the left and right Y components and uh, getting the whole gantry except for the X cross member assembled. That will be in the third part. So what we're going to do, I've already inserted everything on this rail. We're going to put in nine M3 rolling T-nuts and eight of those little spacers that I made. Okay, so that's the one I've already done. Let's get my other side, which I haven't done yet. In the, oh, in, in the middle too, I've left a gap of two spaces um, when I screw everything in because that makes it nice and even on the rail when it goes in. So here's the other rail that we're going to be putting on. We've got two of them. And these are my inserts. When you print these, just make sure you don't have any peeling off the bed because that'll make it harder for it to um, sit in the slot. I mean, it'll probably get compressed anyway. Um, you, it won't take too much. And make sure there's no little um, bags on the little lip that sticks out. It's supposed to be a half millimeter at most. What I found worked was a 0.15 millimeter layer height and the first layer of 0.2. Um, that way it can get the 0.5 precisely and you just need to make sure your printer's dialed in to get it. Put that in. It's, like I said, it's a tight fit. Don't want them, there's no point in putting them in if they're going to be moving around. Now these are the M3s. I'll be right back once they roll in and I've got them all lined up. Okay, so that's all done. I think I've got them fairly well lined up with the hole patterns now. As I said, there's a two hole gap in the middle and everything else is every other one on both sides. So the next thing is to screw the rails in. Now one thing to remember before you put the linear rails on is make sure that they're nice and clean and free moving. I've uh, used Teflon on my z-axis and I've put a little bit of, I thought I'd try some silicone on here. It seems to be running a little bit smoother with the silicone grease in there. Um, they're both very, very good anyway. But you want to make sure you do that before you assemble everything because it will be a pain in the butt to take it apart later. Okay, let's uh, get this sitting over here. Now, one of the things you need, let's just get back to the there's some measurements you need to make sure of. So what you want to make sure is you're going to measure 25 millimeters in from the end and the same on this end. And the reason for that is because you're going to be having um, extra components put in there that are going to take up that space. And you want this rail to be right in the middle. Okay. The Y tensioners are going to slide into a certain level, take up one end and the mount for the gantry at the other end is going to be taking up part of that end as well 25 so an inch each so make sure you get it in the middle so it doesn't have to be fractions of a millimeter accurate but you want it to be 25 that is basically where that one is at right now and all my screws are slightly misaligned so let's get them lined up i'll just realign them all okay now they they're all lined up and we've got a nice 25 mil at each end. We can use our printed guide pieces. Um, that one's for an MGN 12. We use that later. We need the MGN 9 ones. These will slip over the frame and the rail and hold it it's nice and central. I've got. I printed off a few extras so I can stick one in the middle as well. Now hold it nice and central, ready for you to put all the screws in. So the first thing is put all the screws in just gently. I just snugged up, but still so that you could move the rail a little bit if you need to. So we need all the screws to be put in. Probably pays to put maybe one in first. Now, a lot of these T-nuts, they are brass with a coating on them, so don't lamb them up way tight, otherwise you'll lightly strip them. Just a light, and we can go to the other end, and get another one in. Okay, now just 
rinse and repeat all the way along. Okay, now once you got all your screws in place, make sure that your little spaces will still drop in nice and freely. If you find it binding, see this is just dropping in real nice, then it means your rail has shifted a little bit. Um, I haven't tightened these down tight yet, they're just finger stop turning kind of tight. Um, the other thing to do is take the rail and make sure it's not binding anywhere. If it is, you might have got the rail twisted and the carriage is binding. It doesn't take much because these are precision fit. Okay, so put them back on and we'll go and snug these all up now. Okay, all the screws are in and these guides still fit nice and snug. And there shouldn't be any binding which is good. Sounds slightly different because now it's echoing on the extrusion as well. But I can't feel any binding in there at all, which is excellent. So that's that stage done. You don't need to, as I said, you don't need to land these M8, M3 by 8 screws up tight or anything. Um, they need to be snug. A little bit of um, blue Loctite will be fine, but you don't want to risk stripping them out because that'll be a pain. You'll have to take the whole rail apart in order to just change that one nut. These will get lubricated again and again during the life of the printer as well, but we can just do it in place. So, let's get to the next part of the assembly. See what it says. So, we've done this. We've done the 25 millimeters on the one end. That, by the way, should leave exactly 25 millimeters at this end too, which it does. Um, in some cases you might find these rails are half a millimeter to a millimeter short on their length, or long I guess, um, and so you need to just make slight adjustments to accommodate for that. They want to just be basically right in the middle. Okay, so next step. Tip them upside down. And put in some M5 T nuts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight M5 T nuts. Let me just get those and I'll be right back. All right, I just had a quick peek ahead, and we'll need uh, one, two, three, four more M5 T nuts for the bottom, as well as four M3 T nuts. So, got those. Go back to the view. Oh, actually, let's stay with the diagram a second. Scroll down. So, we're going to put the adjusters for the belts on the ends of the rails. And the orientation is... Got to make sure you get your orientation correct. The bolt is going to be on the top, as you can see in the picture here. The bolt is on the top. 5 millimeter holes are on the top. It doesn't quite look right. Let me just check this a second. Okay, so the requirement is we have the adjustment idlers with the two 5mm holes on the top with the linear rail sitting on the bottom, as we can see in this picture. So, um, based on that picture I can see there, let's go to the overhead screen. You can see That's exactly what I've got. This one is going to go on the right side, and this one will go on the left side, and they have to go onto the ends of these, like this. And we haven't put the two nuts in there yet. That was the step that I think I just glossed over. One sec. Okay, got all the T nuts in. We've got Two on each end of M5s on the top of the rail. The linear rails go on the bottom of the Y rails, not the top. So this, this is the top, this is the bottom. We've got an M5 and an M3 at each end of this side with the rail. And we have two M5s on the top side over here and here. We will need our accent uh, belt clamps. So I have four of these printed in red. Um, just to accent with the black, same as all the other parts I've done mostly. 
and we need to screw them into the ends. Now you want to make sure you get the orientation right. So if you look at these, they have an M5 and an M3 hole on this side. That obviously doesn't go on this side of the rail, it won't fit. It needs to go on this side. Okay, and it needs to have the adjusters on the what would be the inside of the rails. So one would go here, and the other one will go here. Sorry, got the whole thing mixed about like that. Okay, now one thing about aligning these, if you look at the picture again, when you push them on, right, we're going to put this clamp on the top with these two M5 by 16 button heads. You need to make sure that the end of the adjustment is perfectly flush with the end of the rail. Because when you start putting the belts on, you want to make sure all the belts are exactly the same length for the same tension. So if all the other measurements are accurate, then they will be. Okay, um, the thing about these as well, they have a bit of a recess in on one side of them. They're perfectly flat on the other side and there is a little notch on the end with a curve. So this needs to be placed such that it is on the outside edge because that's where the belts are going to come down and in. All right, so let's get that done. All right, I've got all my M5 by 16 button heads. I've got my parts slid onto the rail. Now one way of trying to make sure they fit nicely is just to get something with a hard edge and you can use it to push. You know, it doesn't matter what you use as long as it's flat and if you just you just use that and just push it on you make sure it's nice and square on the end. But get the screws in first because they won't necessarily perfectly line up and you need to put it through remember the let's get this in the middle here so you can see the notch needs to be on the outside on the outside the adjustments on the inside part here and then your bolt goes through this is why they're the longer bolt sizes okay we need a different Allen key. So just gently, you don't need to go too tight right now. And make sure you're aligned up on the end. Nice and square, which it is. And then just give it a little nip at the moment, because you may need to tweak these at a different point. So that's just nipped up. We do the same for the other one. Notch to the outside and the underside. Two and five sixteen button head screws. That's two. Check for your alignment again. It's not quite lined up there, so just push it in. Now it is nicely lined up. And just nip it up just a little bit for now. We will be slackening these off later when we put the belts in, so that's why I'm saying you don't have to put them in really, really tight right now. So that's that done. Let me go to a wider view because I keep losing you off the screen. So that's those two done. And if we go back to our screen, and there we go. That's, we've just done this one. Put those in. We've just made sure they're aligned with the end. And we've made sure the notch orientation is correct. Now we're going to do the other side, which we've already done. And now we're going to put them into the ends of the X part of the extrusion, which has more of the same, pretty much. All right, so let's go and flip over to there. Now the basics of the look on the picture first. Yeah, you're aligned right to the exact end of that one and the same red clamp pieces that will uh, color coded and put the slots underneath a little curved notch to the outside and then we go to the XY joints which we haven't assembled yet 
So let's get this done and then we'll be pretty much done with this piece of it. Let's flip back to our view. There we go. So this part is the inside. So we turn it around. That's on the right hand side. It will slide in here. Okay. Bring it in close for a moment. Put the M5, uh, M516s in through the red bit, of course. That one's a little bit of printer burr in it. There we go. And we'll drop that in here. As I said, these are going to be slackened off when we put the belts in because the belts need to go underneath them. There's going to be four 9mm belts going in here. So for now we'll just gently nip it. For the moment we need to make sure it's set on the end to be exactly flush again. If I pull that knot and push it in, oh, that's that one. We'll just nip that up a little bit. And now we'll do the other side. That's going to be pretty much the same thing. Let's get these screws out of the way. So it's going to drop in here. We're going to just line the threads up. Put our piece on, our accent clamp. And drop these in. Tight enough to hold it, but not so tight you can't adjust the extrusion. You need to make sure it's flush with the end. I don't know the extrusions are exactly the same length, which is important for all this to work. I can see here that it's sticking out. You can see that in the picture there. Zoom in a little bit. All right. So what we need to do is put this on the end and we'll just push it in until it's nice and flush and then just nip it up to hold it there. And basically that is our gantry all assembled. Quite big. Oh, hold on. I can get it, more of it in with this shot. There we go. Poking around my keyboard. This is quite a big project for this little bench. Anyway, so we're all set up there. If we go back to the instructions, you can see we've got our accent pieces on. And this is basically what we have. Gantry done. Flush installs at the end, which we've checked for everything. So next thing is the X and Y joints. I'll make that, start that bit in the next video. Because it involves the flange bearings and things like that. So I want to keep that separate. So for now, that's the end of this video. I uh, hope you like it and I uh, hope you join me on the next one as the assembly continues. See you soon.